What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass and today's video we are talking about fishing line. Why are there so many different styles and brands and types? We're covering it all, let's go. The last time that you walked down the fishing aisle at your uh, local tackle shop or your sporting goods store, you probably noticed that there is a ton of different fishing lines. Now, some of you guys might understand already and get this. Some of you guys might not have a clue. So today's video, gonna kind of go over the different styles of lines I use, the different scenarios, and more importantly, the different types of line and how they can benefit you in your fishing. Because believe it or not, there are different styles and based on the types of line you're using, it can and will affect your hookup ratio, uh, your hook to land ratio, your the, the way it works on your rod and reels. There's just a lot to take in to consider with fishing line that quite honestly, might seem like uh, it's, a, it's a waste of time, but really understanding line, understand what it, understanding what it was designed for will help you guys truly catch more fish. So where do we start? So fishing line, it can, it can be as simple as going to your favorite sporting goods store, or shopping online, your favorite tackle shop, and just buying a school a, a spool of line, right? But hopefully after this video, you understand or you have a better understanding of the different types of line and which line will best apply to your fishing, okay? So basically, from the beginning, there's basically four types of fishing line, okay? There's monofilament, that's going to be basically your, your most common, least, ex, least kind of least expensive line. Uh, you have your fluorocarbon, that's gonna be more of your uh, basically invisible line. You have your copolymer, which is basically like a coated monofilament line. Out of all the four, that's the least that I use. And then braided line, actually braided fishing line. So for the most part, I use braid, I use fluoro, and I use a little bit of mono, okay? Now, understanding the differences, let's talk monofilament. So mono, you guys can see, I literally pulled out like, some of my line containers. You guys know that I travel. I carry a lot of different line. I got braid line in here. I have fluorocarbon line in here. I got some mono in here, all on individual spools. Then I have my leader boxes in my boat where I have my, my fluorocarbon, I have my mono, and then I have my, my shock leader. We're gonna talk about that. And then I have my bulk spools over here. I got my bulk spools again line. Like I said before, it matters. It can literally make a difference in hooking the fish, landing the fish, and, bl and, br and blanking, right? So line matters, and it's such an overlooked aspect of fishing. Um, I carry a ton of it because I'm always switching it out. So Getting back to mono, monofilament, it is one of your least expensive lines. Here's my, here's my mono leader box. I hardly ever throw just a straight mono spool of line, okay? I don't throw mono straight a lot. Really the only technique that I throw straight monofilament would be vertical jigging. If I'm throwing a an ounce, ounce and a half jigging spoon vertically, monofilament floats. So it has resistance as that spoon is falling. So if you're using mono line, 
when you're spooning, you're not gonna foul up. You're not gonna have your, your hooks hooking that uh, line on the way down as much as or as often as you would if you're throwing fluorocarbon. But that's about the only time that I throw straight mono, but I do use a lot of monofilament as leader line. So if I'm throwing braid to leader on top water, I'm throwing monofilament leader, okay? It's fairly inexpensive. It's pretty good for abrasion resistance and it's really good around wood. So if you're a guy that likes to fish crankbaits, flip, you know, pitch around wood and you find that your, your floor carbon's getting hung up in that wood, it's kind of digging into that wood, uh, try switching to monofilament. Now the downside with mono it, uh, it's not as sensitive as a stiffer line, like the, like a, a fluorocarbon, right? So there are some pros and cons. One of the good things about monofilament and the reason that we use it for a lot of our leaders, like for top water and such is because it has some, uh, stretch to it. So when you're reeling, and you get bit and you swing that big heavy, let's say swim bait rod, we, we use a connection knot. So we tie a connection knot to our, from our braid, our main line to our monofilament. Well, that, that, that connection knot is gonna feel a lot of impact, right? When we rear down and we set that hook, so having that stretch, a little bit of give in that monofilament, uh, kind of takes up and makes up for that connection knot. And that's why we don't lose hardly any fish uh, as long as we're tying the right knot. So if you're trying to finesse fish or you're fishing a technique where you need a lot of bond, bottom contact feel, monofilament is probably not the right line for you. But again, it's inexpensive, it floats, it's good around wood, and it has some uh, stretchability to it. Number two, probably the second most common line is gonna be fluorocarbon. So fluorocarbon, the benefits of fluorocarbon is it's more sensitive than monofilament. It's virtually uh, invisible underwater, which is really cool. So even though you can see it underwater, it just kind of disappears. So if you're fishing your finesse techniques or you're fishing in ultra clear water, that's where your, your fluorocarbon is gonna be key, right? Slower baits, slower fishing, those fish have a chance to see that line. It's just better to have four fluorocarbon as well as sensitivity. There's a lot of different price points in fluorocarbon. Some of them can get really, really pricey, but what you're paying for is basically sensitivity, okay? Um, the higher price lines, a little bit more a little bit more rigid, but they have uh, they have a little bit of memory. You might have to stretch it a little bit, but they have a ton of sensitivity, and that's what's key. So fluorocarbon is great when you're finesse fishing, and you don't want a lot of stretch, and you need that sensitivity. Now, in that category, there are several types of fluorocarbon, and what these companies have done they've went through and they've added particles and, and added coatings and all sorts of stuff to give you a fluorocarbon that might have a little more stretch or a little less give, uh, you know, some line that'll actually give you some shock. Like I talked about with that mono, some shock leader, they'll give you a little bit of stretch, but you're still getting the, the invisibility factor and the sensitivity factor. Uh, so there's some really cool features in in uh, fluorocarbon. You know, these companies have sp spent a lot of money designing these lines and they do make a difference. You know, you might get like a, a flipping line that has different colors every so many feet. So you can visually see that it's like a strike indicator or you might have a cranking line that has a little more stretch or a little more abrasion resistance for cranking around rocks. So there's different types of fluorocarbon as well. Some of my favorites, my all day, every day, most common fluorocarbon that I use is Sunline FC Sniper. 
It's right there middle of the pack cost wise, but for the most part, this is what I'm throwing if I'm throwing a real straight spooled with fluorocarbon. For me, it's a great combination of sensitivity, abrasion resistance, and strength. So that's my go-to fluorocarbon. With that said, there are some other great ones on the market. Uh, Seagar makes some good line. Uh, Suffix makes some good line. Uh, like I said, I mentioned these guys. If you're into cranking or flipping, you can get kind of those technique specific fluorocarbons for you that are all gonna have little, little changes and little subtleties uh, to really help in those techniques, those styles of fishing. Okay, so now let's talk about braided line. You've heard me mention it a couple times already in this video. You know, Matt and I, we love throwing braid to leader. There's a bunch of benefits to throwing braid. One, it lasts, I mean, it lasts so long. I mean, this spool right here, I've had that spool of braid on there for a season and a half, okay? I don't have to replace it after every fishing outing, after every trip or, or whatever, right? A braided line, it's literally braided line, right? It's a bunch of different uh, fibers braided around each other. And so when you're looking at braided line, there's different carriers. There's four or eight or, where's that? 13 different threads or um, fabrics being wound together. It's actually braided line. But the, the durability of braid is awesome, right? You might have to re-spool your fluorocarbon five or six times before you ever re-spool your braid. So it's cost efficient. It might cost a little bit more to put it on uh, when you when you buy it, but you're not going to go through nearly as much of it. Another awesome benefit of braid is the sensitivity. There's hardly any stretch to braid. So when that fish bites, you feel it. When you set the hook, that hook's coming. There's, there's no give whatsoever, and it is ultra sensitive. That's why through the years, I mean, heck, we used to, Matt and I, we used to throw big swim baits on monofilament, right? Abrasion resistant, inexpensive, but it had a ton of stretch. So you'd set the hook and that line would, blow. you know, sometimes that line gives on a long cast, it could give a couple feet. Like there's some, there's some stretch to it, right? So we went to that, through that, we went through the straight fluorocarbon. And there's benefits to each, right? There's benefits to the fluorocarbon. If you're fishing a lake with ultra clear water, lots of visibility, you want that invisibility. But for us, we primarily, I'd say probably 75% of the time, it doesn't matter if we are finesse fishing on a spinning rod, or we're throwing lipless cranks or power fishing on a crank on a on a bait caster or even throwing big glide baits we are throwing braid to some kind of a leader again even when we're cranking we're burn 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 burn, burn pause we want that bait we don't want that mono to stretch and then condense we want when we stop that reel handle we want that bait to stop we want to trigger that bite so with that braid you have that uh, that connective connectivity. You just you're connected to that bait. You're there's there's a very little stretch at all. The durability, um, you know, in the braided line, there's there's a ton of brands and styles on the market as well. So I'm gonna run through some of the braid that we like to throw, or at least I like to throw, and hopefully that adds a little bit of information for you guys. I talked about it a little bit, but understanding how braided line is, is made uh, matters, okay? What I've found is the more carriers or the more, the more wraps, the smoother or easier to cast, uh, I'd say smoother, not necessarily easier to cast, smoother the braid is, okay? So one of my favorites, got it spooled up right here, 
is this guy right here. That's suffix 131. You could say 131, 13, 1, but basically it's 13 um, fibers, okay? Ultra smooth, small diameter. That's another benefit of braided line is the diameter. You could be throwing 20 pound braided line, but it's the same diameter of four, five, or six, I mean, three, two, three, four, five, six um, mono or fluorocarbon lines. So you can put a lot more line on your spool, but, but getting back to the benefit of it, ultra smooth, small diameter allows me to physically cast farther with braided line than I can with fluorocarbon or mono. That's just another, another key benefit. But that 131, top of the line for me, that's what I throw the majority of my um, my top water baits on or crank baits on. Again, I'm tying a leader to it. In the instance of top water, I'm throwing a mono leader onto it so it floats. If I'm cranking, I'm throwing a fluorocarbon leader onto it. But um, but yeah, so the braided line is uh, is a must for us. Again, tying those leaders allows you to interchange the best leader line for the technique or the situation you're in. But um, that 131 is really, really good. Another great line is this guy right here. This is Power Pro Max Quattro. Now, just like this guy being 13, this is four. So the benefit of that, you get really small diameter. You still get the strength. I mean, I probably half of my braided, my power fishing braided reels are max quattro. You get a ton, I mean, my frog rods max quattro, my punching rod, basically my strongest, most powerful rod combinations have max quattro on them. Couple reasons. It is the thinnest braid, but it's still strong. So like a 65 pound max quattro is basically, it feels like, or looks like um, a 50 pound braid in another, in another brand, if that makes sense. So you get, you get a, a higher poundage break point, but a smaller diameter. And then with that, with just the four wraps, it's kind of uh, abrasive right? It's kind of rough feeling. So if I'm fishing anywhere around grass, like I said, frogging or punching, when I set the hook, that, that braid almost acts like a saw and cuts right through that grass, that vegetation, uh, you know, lily pads, whatever it may be. And it helps me get those fish to the boat. So that Max Quattro is an awesome, awesome braid. But hopefully you're understanding the differences, right? The smooth braid, the, uh, the, the, less carrier braid, but still strong. Uh, a couple other braids for you. You'll find Matt and I will have rigged on our spinning rods or our light casting rods is a version of a slick braid. So a lot like that 131, this stuff's actually, it's a little bit heavier diameter, but it's 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 slick. So the high, visi high visibility slick braid. So that suffix 832, that's an eight strand or eight carrier. That guy right there, these are slick braids. They're smooth, but more important, they're, they're high visibility. So bright yellow, bright pink. These are our finesse techniques. A lot of guys, if you're throwing, say a weightless wacky rig worm, you know, you throw it up underneath that dock and you're watching your line. Well, it's a lot easier to see your connection knot when it's bright yellow or bright pink than let's say a green that matches the water, right? So having a high visibility line is awesome if you're finesse fishing, having those finesse techniques. So again, that's braided line. Again, the benefits of it, um, durability, castability, strength, and sensitivity. The downside is the visibility, right? So that's why we're always putting a leader on it. Getting back to power fishing with braid, uh, this guy right here, I want to talk to you guys about this real quick. This is a fluorocarbon, but it kind of comes from the saltwater world where they're fishing for really big, powerful fish. 
um, the shock leader. So this is a fluorocarbon, comes in real big line. You can get up to like 30, 35 pounds. So you swim bait guys that like to throw straight fluorocarbon or straight mono, I, I challenge you guys, you know, get good with your connection knots. I know a lot of you guys don't want to throw a $200 bait with a connection knot, but uh, throw your, your favorite connection knot. We like throwing the, uh, either the, double blood knot basically a, a, it's a knot they use in o the ocean uh scene um we tie our bait on with like a san diego jam but we're throwing big line and we have the the castability of braid we have the sensitivity of braid we have the shock absorber like mono and we have the invisibility of fluorocarbon this is the best of of all three worlds so i really challenge you guys to try that out that's how like I said, Matt and I have been throwing swim baits for decades, and that's what we've come down to is throwing our even our glide baits, uh, you know, our soft swim baits. We're throwing braid to to that shock leader, that fluorocarbon leader. But um, knowing the right line, low, knowing its limitations and capabilities will really help you when picking the right combo. Right? You don't want to take braid. Or take a, you know, that's that's why some guys will power fish on a a softer, you know, a slower, a softer, less powerful rod, so less powerful, a softer action rod. They're power fish on it because they're using a specific line. Maybe they have a maybe they're using a braid to a leader or straight braid, and they just know that they don't they don't care if that rod gives a little bit because they know they're going to get it back in that hook set with the braid. On the flip side, those of you guys that are flipping with like a, a flipping stick, but you're flipping with mono because you need a little bit of stretch. You don't want to you don't want to blow that fluorocarbon up on your hook sets. So you're using an extra heavy, you know, rod, but you're using a little bit more giving line to kind of balance that out. If you kind of pair too powerful of line and too powerful of rod, you know, other than like punching or frog fishing, you might you might rip those hooks out or bend those hooks out. So that's why it's really important to match the style of line with the right rod for the technique that you're going to be using it for. So guys, I hope that helps. Again, we talked about the monofilament, basically floats, inexpensive, abrasion resistant, has some stretch. We got fluorocarbon, that's your finesse fishing techniques, your clear water techniques, more sensitivity, less stretch, um, and then your braided line, right? Durability, sensitivity, and power. It is, it is key. One other thing I want to talk about too, if you guys are spooling on your own line, okay? I might just grab this mono. I didn't even talk to you guys really about the mono line. Two of our favorites right there. This is the Maxima. That's the ultra green. That's a, bra or a, a mono that we've used for a long time. And then this suffix, this is the elite mono. Again, fairly inexpensive. You can get a, a real large spool for fairly inexpensive, uh, but that's great leader material. But when you're putting your line on your bait caster, uh, hopefully I can explain this. So it makes sense. Basically, you want this line coming off the same direction that this line is going on the spool. So you want it coming off and going on the same direction. So to make it easy, you want the line coming over the top to you when you're putting it on a, a, a bait caster, okay? So you want it coming from the top coming towards you and then reeling on your spool like that, okay? On the flip side, if you're putting on line onto a spinning rod, two ways, either face up or face down, depending, I wish there was a, a, a simple answer. I wish all brands did it the same way, but depending on the brand of line, it's either gonna be on the bottom right? Say it's on your boat deck and you're putting line on, you're reeling it on. It's going to either be coming off the face or off the back and check that depending on the brand, if you drop your rod tip 
One way the line will kind of twist up on itself, and I'll tell you that's that's the wrong way. So flip that spool over and put that line on uh, the correct way. You'll have a lot less line twist and a lot less issues when uh, putting that line on your reel and casting. Another tip for you, you can always uh, pour a little bit of warm water on your spools. Now, especially monofilament, that'll help take some of the memory or the kinks out of your line. If you put some warm water on it, that'll definitely help. But guys, fishing line, I know it seems kind of like a, a lame topic or a not very important topic, but it really is. Now you know why I have so many different styles of line, different brands, different types, because depending on the technique, the the uh, depending on the scenario, I'm gonna need one of basically three. So guys, like I said, if you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get those as soon as possible. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you learned something from this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.